thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me at Plant Problems today. I've got a special episode today where Charlie... Pierre Marini from Medically Assisted CBD is doing an interview, and I'm actually the interviewee today. So hopefully you guys enjoy this next episode. Thanks so much for listening in. Hi, and welcome back to Medically Assisted CBD with Charlie Pierre Marini. Thanks for joining us. Today we have another very interesting guest today, um, our friend Tony Frischknecht been going over that, pronouncing that name a couple of times. He is the CEO and founder of Plant Problems um, and also an author of uh, From Black Market to the Man, uh, detailing his journey of from cannabis, black market cannabis to legitimate medical cannabis. So thank you for coming on the show today. Charlie, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So uh, I was on your podcast a couple weeks ago, um, and I really enjoyed, you know, speaking with you about everything. And I just wanted you to come back on here and kind of give us your parallels on how you're so well versed in the medical cannabis industry and how that kind of is paralleling into the CBD industry and how you're seeing, you know, what's going the same and what's going to be different and how all of these companies in the CBD industry are going to either, you know, either just soar or really sink. Um, I mean, you've been in the industry for 15 years. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story. You went from growing in your basement to, you know, full, full vertical integration. So c- give us a little bit of background. Yeah. So um, my background, uh, originally I was, uh, I grew up in construction. So my father was a carpenter my entire life. And what happened is, uh, building a grow room and carpentry work kind of went together, right? So in uh, late 2005, I actually constructed my first grow room in a basement. Um, And I was actually on the illegal market at that point. Uh, Over the next year and a half, uh, I I had some pretty big successes and the biggest thing that was bothering me was the illegitimacy of the side of the market I was in. So I decided, well, let's figure out how to become a part of the medical uh, marijuana industry. Uh, I didn't know anybody that had done it yet, but I knew there was some opportunity there. So I followed that pathway uh, over the next three to four years. Uh, And and then at the end of 2009, I decided, well, let's go ahead and step it up and go into the uh, commercial growing side. And so in 2010, uh, we were growing commercially. We uh, started our first uh, dispensary back in, uh, in in 2010. So that's kind of a general overlay of, of where I was in the, in the cannabis industry. And then from 2010 to 2015, um, we built uh, two dispensaries that have medical and recreational in it. We also built a couple large grows where we were managing about 20,000 square foot of indoor grow. Oh, wow. And we were, we were doing all, uh, for the growers out there, we were doing soilless medium. Um, and in that time, I also got in with a couple of guys. We, were, uh, we built an extraction company uh, around a vaporizer. So we were, we were one of the first few companies uh, in Colorado and probably in the U S that was, uh, had an E, uh, marijuana joint is what we, oh, wow. we had created. So that's a little bit of my background. And then, um, trying to go back into what you had just talked about is the parallels between cannabis and CBD. Well, you know, it's funny. The, the only reason there is this big distinction is regulations. Mm-hmm. And I know, 
I've been asked about it many times, you know, well, what's the, what's the big difference? Well, the big difference is THC. That's really, yep. um, most plants have both THC and CBD. Um, but the way the regulatory system has worked is like, well, we know it's not the psychoactive. So we're going to take that out of the regulations and we're going to say, if it is what below 0.03% THC in the state of Colorado. Now other states have adopted that, but it's, it's, not that way across all 50 states. It could be different in different areas. But what they stated is that that 0.03%, anything under that, um, and it has CBD in it, it's, it's legal. So yeah. that's really the difference is the, the plants, um, it's the same plant. Uh, genetically, it's a little different, but it grows relatively the same. Uh, some species are you know, grows longer. I mean, it, there's a lot of variables to it, but uh, people people don't really understand. Well, what do you mean it comes from the same plant? Well, it's only on a law, on a, uh, depending on the laws and stuff. So, yeah, that's what I try and tell people is you know, uh, cannabis and hemp. They're they're you know, I mean, marijuana and hemp are the same thing. They're both cannabis. Um, so it's kind of hard for people to wrap their heads around. It's even taken me a while when I first started in this industry about the similarities and the minute differences. And we're talking now percentages, right? 0.3% THC is legal. 0.31% THC is an illegal plant. And so we're splitting hairs at this point, but there's a lot of regulations that are coming in and going. And um, so one thing I was kind of just thinking about is commercially growing cannabis and how, how versus, you know, when you're growing marijuana versus hemp, would, I mean, are they pretty similar situations that you're growing both of them in? Are you stopping the growth cycle and the hemp a little bit earlier because you don't want too much THC? How, you know, what, what, do you, what do you see the differences and the similarities? Well, some people, uh, that last point, some people can manipulate the plant to, to do, mm -hmm. do what they want it to do. You know, when you're growing indoors, you can change the situation how you see fit. Uh, basically, if you can imagine, <clears throat> you've got a large-scale laboratory. You're controlling all the environment. You're controlling the lighting. Uh, you're controlling the water, and you're controlling the nutrients. So, the hemp plants to really produce some of the fibers that you need for a lot of these products, they're they're much different than what you want um, genetics for a flowering plant that you're going to actually use to smoke. Yeah, um, and so you know the the big difficulty right now i feel is there is tons of genetics out there and, and people are just really starting to understand what they can do and so you know there's I've, i was talking about mistakes in in one of my podcasts recently so this kind of popped in my mind but you know unfortunately these farmers are left to finding their own genetics and mm -hmm. In some of these states that are not, um, they're not, they're really new to the industry. They don't have the access to these genetics. Like there's a few, um, there's a company here in Colorado that has some a state certified genetics. And what that starts getting into when you get certifications for seeds, it's really tricky because you'll see right now what we don't have and what certified seeds have is they have basically they'll have like, this is how much crop you'll get per acre. This, these are all the yields that will happen. And so you'll have all that data and this is what farmers need. This is what they've used for all their crops. Right? So we're going through and especially the States are like starting up the season. Uh, if they were fortunate enough to find somebody from another state that they were able to get some seeds from, that knows how they grow, how they grow, and how to harvest them. It, it, it's it's a huge undertaking just throwing a seed in the ground and saying, "Oh, hey, let's see what pops up." You know, <laughs> this guy's got a lot of money at risk, and they've got a lot of time. And you you can't just go, uh, what's the word for it, willy nilly, and just throw yeah. seeds in the ground and expect you're going to be a millionaire because that's not how it happens. Um, there's a ton of farmers out there that have learned huge, huge 
you know, they learned, they, they learned a lot of massive, what's the best word for it? Lessons last year that really, uh, some of them are gone already. And so we're starting to see those certified seeds come out, but unfortunately the demand is so high for them to find good seeds that are quality is like, you know, finding a diamond in the rough, right? It's, 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 yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. I mean, I was reading some stories last year. I think there was a bunch of, I think it was Oregon farmers that, uh, I mean, a lot of these guys are converting their farms from something that they've been farming for generations. They know, like you said, they know the crop yield, they know conditions, they know harvesting cycles, they know everything. Now they're seeing this hemp gold rush. And so they're trying to get in on it and they don't know how to water properly. That's moldy. You know, they don't know this, you know, the hemp plant's pretty hardy in itself. Just, I mean, basically from where it came from, but the, they don't know the specific, the specific conditions that this plant needs in order to, you know, to really become the type of plant you can actually harvest. So there's a the learning curve, which I didn't realize is steep, very steep. Yeah, it is. And there's a lot of them that uh, don't learn the lesson until the end when harvest time comes. Um, yeah. I talked to guys, this was just even a couple of years ago. They were like, these stocks are 13, 14 feet high. I don't have a machine that I can. And they're out there cutting these things down by hand. Wow. Um, and you can imagine the amount of labor that it takes to do this, um, especially in the cloning process or when you're seeding at the beginning, you've got to do all this stuff by hand because they're just starting to come out with these machines that are able to do this for us. And uh, you can't ship seeds over from another country and expect them to grow the, st- the same. So we're seeing all these little uh, – pieces of the puzzle that the farmers are trying to put together on the fly. And it's, it's really scary. I'm scared for them because I, I know the feeling. I mean, I've done it on an indoor scale, which much, much smaller when I started, but when it's all that you have and you're risking all that you have, it's, 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 it's relative to your situation, right? So these guys that might be putting up a hundred acres and there might be guys that have a hundred acres, they have all their money and all their farm equipment invested into it. So that it's riding on, if we don't make this season positive and cash flow successful, we're not doing it again next year. And so that's, I mean, that's obviously where a lot of the similarities with hemp and marijuana, I mean, they're, they're both, everyone is still learning. Um, I mean, it went from being grown in basements like you were to now they're doing, you know, certified medical cannabis and CBD and hemp. And we're just all really learning about this. And so this well, is fortunately, be- fortunately we're learning about it, but for hemp CBD, um, they actually have a head start on figuring all this stuff out True, sure. because, because they're federally recognized, right? Still, yeah. THC is not. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's still a wild west though, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's federally illegal and legal and depends on, you know, what your packaging says. It depends on the mode of how you're delivering it. You know, is it an edible? Is it a topical? So it's, people are mixing it with different things and it's, it's a crazy. It's a, it's, it's, it's a kind of an artist, artisan uh, spotlight out there right now, right? There's guys that there's manufacturers that manufacture this specific product, the same every day, every night, you know, it goes through this process right now. People are developing and designing uh, different applications for hemp and CBD and THC. And they're kind of just putting it together and saying, all right, let's test this out. I, I mean, the pharmaceutical world, doesn't operate that way right so we're so we have so much more to learn and for you guys that are hardcore uh, cannabis people and don't like the pharmaceuticals I get it but I'm just telling you that as a manufacturing side of this this whole industry we have a lot of room for growth oh it's gonna I mean that's why back in the 1930s why cannabis actually fell out of favor right because one of the things was not only because of the marijuana tax, but also because the Bayer invented the pill, 
right? And so you're now able to give a pill every time I know how much it's going to be in there. And it's very easy to take, you know, you're not making some tincture in your bathtub. So the cannabis industry is seeing that, I think, and they're really saying like, all right, how do we standardize this molecule and this plant, this delivery for this every time? And it's, it actually, it's a, it goes counter against to what cannabis, the culture stands for, right? And that's kind of, it's hard to replicate a plant with what, over 150 active molecules in it. And you're going to tell me every time it's going to be in a pill, it's going to be the same way. It's very, it's, it's going to be nearly impossible. So there's going to have to be some type of, like you said, seed genetics where we know this flower planted these conditions and six weeks from now, we're going to harvest it. And the, you know, the buds have percentage of, of cannabinoids within this range, you know, and so it's going to, that's what's going to have to be, I, I feel, but. Um, yeah, there, there'll be ranges and, and coming up with those uh, baselines, I think is key. I, I just had a, discussion with a good close friend of mine we were talking about string names and they're they're just so they're yeah. just so out there right they're, they they make no they make no sense to the consumer especially the new one um and they're still stuck back in the uh they're still stuck back in the underground world market Correct. where these names mean something and correct and it, it's just it, there's a lot of growing up to do is what I mean on, on both the hemp and, and the cannabis side of the, of the industry. Yeah. So kind of, kind of leading down that path, what we were talking about was um, how, when you had your, your storefront, you got really well versed into how coaching patients and consumers about different types of products give you different types of reactions. So that's a big thing, as you know, in the CBD industry, same thing as the marijuana, uh, you know, telling a patient, hey, take, eat this gummy, you're going to feel like this. You can't say that because everybody responds so differently. You can say most people feel this effect. So, you know, kind of walk me through, you know, what, what do you see and how do you feel and, you know, what, what are kind of, how do you recommend patients and, you know, consumers about taking CBD or, you know, and cannabis? Like what, what, what's kind of, what, what's your go-to, where do you start at? Well, one of the first things we used to, when we were talking to our customers, is say, you know what, this is going to depend, this is going to affect you, <clears throat> just like you said, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. this was going to affect you differently than me. Yeah. So, we took a slow approach, right? Yeah. Um, low and slow. Yeah, low and slow. We... We even did it before the regulations like were pushing on us to talk to our customers. It was like, look, guys, because being from the, you know, the, the the black market side, people would make different edibles and they were all kinds of different strengths. And so I was I was never really a big fan of them because I didn't know what I was taking. You know, you take a aspirin, you know what you're getting with an aspirin. Yep. I just had a call, a, a talk with a guy the other day and we were. We were talking about these edibles levels and, uh, you know, how you can tell, at least in Colorado, with the, the, the growth of the market and the way that things are regulated, what's five milligrams is five milligrams. Yeah. Um, those guys that are inconsistent and don't taste good are out of the market, you know, yep. starting to work its way through. But what we would talk to them is, you know, we had a little system. It was like, look. For you take you take five milligrams for the first hour. Just take your time with this, especially yeah. the new people. Yeah. Usually with the new people, I would say half of a half. True. Right. If you're gonna have a five milligram gummy, cut it in half, two and a half milligrams. I'm I'm a extremely I'm a lightweight as it is with them. So I always started with that and just built my way up. And yeah, usually after you know one or two. I was fine. I didn't need to fill anymore. Yep. But you'll find that the heavy users, uh, people, the heavy medical users, they have a tolerance for it a lot of the time. Uh -huh. So they're used to they're used to that. So you you kind of needed to tell who your audience was when you were talking yeah. to your customer, right? And uh, I'm sure you work the same way. It's like you know, I know this person is. Um, it's their first time. They may be really timid about even mm -hmm. talking to you about using yep. a CBD product because 
because of the old demonization of the plant. Still here. It is still demonized. Yep. Yeah. And you guys are still only medical in Arizona, correct? Correct. It recreational is on the ballot this year again. Yeah. So I think just looking in my crystal ball, once you start seeing that happen, your patients will get a lot more comfortable because they'll see it all around them. And that changes, yeah. that'll change the dynamic of the entire state. That's what we saw here in Colorado. Um, and I think it's, I think it's pretty common except for places like California where they've just had cannabis around, you know, for so long. Right. Um, yeah. So, so when we talked to our patients and we would teach our butt tenders, that was a big part of this because they needed to understand if a bud tender was a heavy user, he needed to look at uh, a point and say, okay, this person is a newbie. This person is not. And you walk them through these, these, these little steps and it, it's pretty simple, but that's only because I was around it all the time. Yeah. You tend to get just like anything else. You tend to get numb to the situation. Yeah. You know, and that's right. Another, another state and I don't see a dispensary. I'm like, Oh, that's right. They don't have dispensaries here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's kind of how I talk to my patients is, you know, everybody's endocannabinoid system is different and it's going to respond differently. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's kind of a, it's an art. And I think a lot of what I tell people, it's actually for most patients, it's actually, they enjoy becoming part of the process rather than me just prescribing here, take these two pills, call me, call me in two weeks. It's like, yeah. Hey, you're going to start this, take a journal, journal every day how you feel you feel like this go up go down you know but they're part of the process they're part of the decision making they're not just getting told what to do so it's, it, it it gives the patient back some control of their treatment which is really cool that is cool I, I you know I I like that approach because exactly that I mean it's like well if you don't feel good then why would you continue taking yeah you know, if, if it's if it makes you feel funny or is um, you know, then lay off or, or, or stop taking it. Maybe it's yeah. something else. That's, that's one thing that, you know, for, for the listeners out there, I was not a big fan of edibles for a long time, even just up until the last couple of years. Um, what I've noticed is that there's a certain amount of CBD that I need with my THC for yeah. me to feel comfortable. Um, that has, that's only come across for the last year and a half. Uh, prior to that, I was a little bit nervous about edibles because uh, the couple that I did have in the past uh, were not consistent. So I was just nervous. I was like, man, I, I, I'm not really a big fan of, of feeling out of place and uncomfortable if, if I take something or yeah. – you know, for those of you who drink, it's like getting drunk and you're overly, you know, you just kind of lose control of your body. And I don't really yeah. like that function. And so it took me a long time. And since people have been creating products in Colorado with the ratios, different ratios, I've tried some of them and they've been, they've been actually pretty enjoyable. Um, not only as a, of an aspect of just feeling a euphoria, but it's, it's, it's got a good balance for my body. Right. Mm -hmm. I've heard people exactly. talk about CBD and, uh, or I'm sorry, sativa and indica. And some people are like, oh yeah, isn't that the one that gets you a lot of energy? And then the other one puts you down. And I was like, again, back to your point, it doesn't always affect people's body the same. Correct. And yeah, people and that's don't, something, yeah, people and don't get that. People don't get that, but people also don't get when I coach people on some of the medical cannabis uses, you know, they, when they get their card, they're excited. And I'm just going to get real high. It's like, well, if you really want this medicinal purpose of this, you need the CBD, you need the other endocannabinoids. Look for a one-to-one -to, -one to start. Then we'll titrate you up from there. You know, if people are like, oh my God, this stuff is so strong. I'm like, yeah, these are now professionals that are breeding these things and harvesting these things. It's not someone doing their back alley, you know, with, with limited supplies. These people are funded by millions of dollars and they're growing very strong strains. And so, you know, looking at the one-to-ones, the two-to-ones, the one-to-twos. And so, it, 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 like you said, this, this industry has a long way to go. Um, and I think the next three to five years, it's going to be very interesting to see where, where it ends up because 
you know, a lot of these companies, I, I don't know how they're going to survive when they're just, especially the C, I mean, the CBD market's a little bit different than the marijuana is because the CBD kind of becomes more gimmicky and people are putting it in hand sanitizer and people are put it in beverages. You know, it's, is it really working? Everyone says they've got nanotechnology, but no one can prove it. You know, so it's, it's nope. kind of like, it's kind of like the, um, you know, the aloe, everything had aloe in it for one time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's the new hot thing. I mean, it, it's a supplemental product that people are able to sell as a supplement. So they're mm -hmm. putting it in everything and calling it that. And, you know, I mean, I'm a business person and if I saw a great idea, I would take it. So a lot of people are doing that right now. Yeah. Um, you know, when we talked, it was like, but what's in it? Right. That's really Correct. what it comes down to. And that's honestly how it's always been with, with these types of products, with supplements is like, okay, it says what's on the jar, but is that what's really in it? Yes. And so I, I always encourage whether it's your product they're using or anybody out there that's listening, you know, at least figure out the product that you're buying has some CBD in it, like at least something that it says, do some information, look for a third party research, third party testing. That's always uh, a huge thing that I tell people to check out when they're looking for CBD products, because that kind of teaches them something. And, and then they know what they're putting in their body. Cause I remember being young for years and taking supplements um, that my dad had always taken and taught me to take. And I didn't even know what they were doing. Yeah. And I'm spending all this money, which a lot of people spend money on these products. And a lot of them are extremely expensive. And then they don't know if they're working. It just says CBD on the label. I mean, they, it, well, at least they don't know how much CBD is in it, right? Correct. That's another thing. It's like, well, it might say it has a thousand milligrams in it, but it could have a quarter of that. And then you're paying for nothing. And so that that's, that's one of the negatives about supplements, yeah. right? They don't, they're not. They're not, it's not regulated. And that's the one thing I've, I, I've, uh, I came across a couple of CBD companies where, uh, I saw that they had, they're getting smarter. So they're getting the lab testing, but then you look on, you look on their, their website, there's no really contact information. Who's behind the brand? Like, so, okay. So you throw up a COA, All right? Now we're legitimate, but wh who are you? What are you doing? You know, like, is there an yeah. email address to contact you? I don't know. So it's getting better. It still needs to get even better. Um, and the FDA and the DEA and, you know, they're all releasing stuff and USDA. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting there. It's going to take time. I mean, look how far we've, the industry has come in the last five years, right? I mean, you could have told me five years ago during, you know, during PA school, if it had been having a CBD company, I would have been like, you're nuts. What that's, I'm not getting high, you know? So it's, it's, it's making its way and it's just taking time. And you've seen it in the cannabis, you know, the straight marijuana industry, which is, is a little bit ahead of regulatory. I think it's already gone through a lot of its bumps and its bruises and the CBD companies are waiting for what's cause they haven't really given us any regulations yet. So yeah, it's going to change. It's going to change a lot. There's going to be a heck of a lot of people that go out of business. Yeah. Um, there's that's, that's when, when you said, see who you're getting it through. Yeah. And for the listeners out there, it, I'm, I'm spoiled because I knew a lot of these people that were creating yes. it. Yes. So I could, I knew what the products they were putting in. Right. But, but for, to, to what uh, you said a minute ago, absolutely know who these people are. Did they just yeah. start this two months ago or have they been doing this for at least a year? Are they, right? you know, is there anything in the news that's about, I mean, we, we live in the, the world of information right now, it's pretty easy to Google stuff, you know, and oh, yeah. kind of do, do your own. And we've also got YouTube. I mean, for, I, I love YouTube. That's one of the great spot to go just search for people and see who's, who's doing anything, especially in the CBD world. You can kind of oh, see yeah. that and, and then kind of go from there. Do your due diligence is really what right. You want to. Right. So, um, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about your, uh, some of your prototype extractions, um, you know, kind of get into the nerdy science stuff. Do you have kind of talk a little bit, hit a bit about that, you know, how, what, what you're doing with that and where that's going? Yeah. So I, you know, thanks for bringing that up. I've, I've yeah. got a lot of little projects I'm working on yeah. and this one is, is a fun one for me because, um, I'm taking some of my knowledge and experience from, 
extraction and we're, mm -hmm. we're actually creating a very small, um, we hope to have it uh, an in consumer version where, where people can actually take and extract their own oil and, oh, wow. and make their own, uh, if they want to make their own edibles. Um, you can also, you can extract any herbs, whether it be cannabis or mint or, um, eucalyptus, lemongrass, olive oil, uh, that's yes, cool stuff. all yeah. that stuff. Uh, because we think that there's some interesting spots in the cooking side of this. Yeah. As well. Uh, because there are so many people that are growing their herbs in the summertime. Yeah. And at the end of summer, it's like, well, they're dead. Like they're not going to make it through the wintertime, at least in Colorado. And so they could be extracting these oils from their herbs out of their garden and use it all year round. Yeah. So this is, this is a fun little project. So yeah, we've got a little CO2, a mini extraction uh, machine that we've got three prototypes that wow. are um, in some uh, labs of some friends of ours that have been doing some testing with it and, and creating some, uh, some different types of, uh, of extraction with it. And it's been really fun, man. It's, it's kind of something that I haven't been able to do because mm -hmm. I've kind of been in this rat race of cannabis for so long. Yep. You know, once you hit the ground running, uh, whether you're in CBD or cannabis, um, you kind of feel like you're, you're going to miss out unless you are just moving. Correct. Right. I mean, Oh yeah. CBD is the same like way, man. There's somebody else that's bringing on a new product yep. and they got a new system that's going to be better than mine. And you know, I, I, I try to talk to entrepreneurs about this as much as possible is, is taking your time to understand not only what you're selling, but understanding your customer is such a huge part of this whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I made many mistakes in the past where I was rushing to get something done just because I had to have it done. Correct. And this is, this says nothing to, to whoever out there that's working on some, I, I, I give you all the power for sure to, to keep doing what you're doing. But just remember that, this thing's going to be here for a while. You're not missing out on anything. Yep. Um, at, at the time when we were in this, uh, this little window, it felt like of, Oh, okay. Now we can grow this legally. I don't know how long this is going to last. Right. For. right. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, now that I think about it, that's probably what kind of got that, you know, got in my mind and I'm like, okay, we just got to keep doing. It. And then all of a sudden it becomes a habit. Yes. It's like, okay, what's the next thing we got to get out? We got to get this done. We got to make, cause we don't know. And so all of a sudden, you know, seven, eight years later go by and I'm like, wow, I, I just didn't even, I didn't even come up for air hardly. No. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, you know, we're, we're in a extremely fast paced world, even though we've had the changes happen in our world with video and, conferencing all the time people are still really busy at least I feel that way um, and the mental stress that people put on themselves for not being getting stuff done as quickly as they should it's not a good thing for for no. out there it's the mental stress that we add to ourselves as entrepreneurs you know it is it'll it'll affect you um, for years to come so for you guys out there, you guys aren't missing anything. If you guys are just starting now and you're, 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 you know, you're enjoying uh, what Charlie's talking about and stuff, it, it's, it's going to be here. If you got a good idea, it's going to be good in the next year or the next two years. Yeah. It's not going to go away. I, I mean, cause everyone's just seeing how much people are making in the CBD industry. And I think in the long, the long play, is going to be, you know, giving value rather than just value above a product. Education is what, you know, I've built my stuff, all of my uh, products and my company on. And so not just selling a product, I'm giving back to people and they can hopefully come to look to me and to my website and to my stuff to trust some of the information I'm putting out. And so, um, you know, people, like you said, people are going to come, people are going to go, people are going to come in, make a lot of money. And then as soon as everyone kind of starts to get smartened up about what's coming along, all these companies start to just go to the wayside. So it's, 
you know, it, it's just uh, next, like you said, three years from now, it's going to be super interesting, especially Arizona's voting again uh, this year for uh, um, adult rec. So uh, what's that going to do for the marijuana industry, right? Uh, and the CBD industry. And, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting as couple of years and, you know, I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, so what, what, uh, you know, I was on your podcast. So talk, talk a little bit about your podcast and what, you know, what you hope to accomplish with it and where you're taking it and who you're interviewing and, you know, give us a little background about what, you, what your podcast is about. Yeah. So, uh, the, the name of the podcast is called plant problems and I interview you know, different CEOs of companies in the cannabis industry. Um, I talk to a lot of the people that are just starting their companies and they're going through some issues. And I try to, I try to expose as many of these problems at the time to either discuss or think about ways to fix them in, in your company or as you're moving along the way to legalization in a lot of yeah. states. And so I find that there are different perspectives across the U S Canada, and it's really interesting to see what regulatory problems are, are happening. And, and that's generally some of the biggest stuff we see, especially uh, coming into new States. It's mostly regulatory. If yeah. you grow a pr plant, you're usually, in pretty good shape. However, the regulations are really what take place. And so I try to take a, a lot of my experience and share that with the listeners. And, and also I try to open up their eyes to opportunities that, that are mm -hmm. available uh, because it's ever changing. Like you said, what happened, you know, last year is completely different from this year. Yeah. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I think you're, uh, you know, you're, you've got a really interesting niche in your podcast of, you know, just a very, the business side of marijuana, um, which a lot of people forget that this is a big business. Um, there's people making and losing a lot of money, especially now it's publicly traded and mad men and, you know, all these, yeah. you know, all these places that are going under getting bought, getting sold. So, you know, I've been approached to dispensary stuff here in Arizona and it's just, you know, the amount of capital to start it. And, you know, I don't know anything about it. And so it's, it's, you know, talking to people like you, it's just, there's a lot to learn when you're going and these people are losing money because they're seeing it as like, Oh, this is the great new thing. Like, let me throw a hundred thousand dollars at this, but then they're getting into an industry that they have nothing, they know nothing about. They just want to make money, which is, which is fine. But, you know, and then in, you know, a year and a half, two years from now when it's not making money and they don't know why, then they're starting to pull money industries starts to kind of, you know, reconfigure. And so it's just an interesting space. Yeah. I mean, you know, my ultimate goal, Charlie is to, I, I honestly want to make other millionaires in cannabis. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I know that, uh, you know, I have a passion for it. Yeah. I, I would love to, you know, open people's eyes to these opportunities that yeah. are available. I'm, I'm a simple guy, man. I grew up, we grew up very, you know, we didn't have anything special. You know, there were times in my life going through high school, we couldn't even afford a phone. You know, these are all things that I dealt with, uh, you know, until, you know, I started making my own money. I didn't even have health insurance. You know, I just, yeah. this was a part of my life. And so, you know, what we're, what I'm really trying to do is make the opportunity visible, whether they are interested in, you know, just creating a product or whether they're growing or whether they're partnering with somebody. I mean, these are all different niches in cannabis that can be filled by people that know nothing about growing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's probably one of the biggest, um, things that probably holds people back. They go, well, I don't know anything about growing guys. I had never grown a plant in my entire life until I started growing cannabis. I had never really grown a plant. <laughs> and so if I can actually do that, yeah, I can show you guys how to get some success there. That's really, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a, it's something that drives me. It's something that is possible for so many people, so many smart business people, 
that think, okay, well, we can just start to grow. Well, I talk about so much about, well, what are you good at, man? If you're a marketing whiz, you can find other people to grow. You can find, partner with some other guys that have retail experience, you know. I think there's a lot of people that jump into our industry um, and they just think they're going to make money. Yeah. It, and it's it's so much further from the truth. It is. I mean, you're going to lose a lot of money most of the time. Uh, I mean, most yes. Yeah, and the, but then that hurts our industry, right? Then it gets a black eye and – because I think companies come, people get used to the products, people like the products and the company's gone and then people are scurrying and they're like, well, this industry doesn't have their crap together. So I'm out, you know? So, um, you know, I, and I, you know, I love it's a double edged sword. I think it it's is a double edged sword, you know, and I'd love, you know, your podcast and, you know, plant problems. I think it's just great plant problems, right? You know, everyone, there's a lot of problems around, uh, around this plant that a lot of people don't understand the back, the behind the scenes of, you know, cannabis is, huge and very complex. So there's um, also some major opportunities for investment, of course. And, and these guys that are getting into it from, from the investment world into cannabis, it's not, it's not as easy as they think either. No. Because these are not, most of them are, are, are barely showing what their P and L's there yeah. are at the end of the day. And, and people don't know how to judge that because they haven't been around it. So, I mean, we do have some IPOs that are out there, but they're just still so new. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you have to look out for when you're when you're getting in the investment world in Canada. Yeah, and if you want to learn more, go listen to your podcast, Plant Problems. Um, well, man, do you got any last anything last to leave us with? Yeah. So if there is anybody out there um, that has any questions for me, please reach out to me at Tony at PlantProblem dot com. Okay. Um, and then you can also go to my blog site. My blog site has all my episodes. It's at uh, plantproblem.com. And Charlie, thanks so much for having me on. Yeah. And thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. We'll keep it's doing some fun. work together. Maybe you can help me make millions. Hey, man, I am open, dude. I, I'm Let's telling do it. you, I really, I, I want to see some success stories. Some guy, I mean, you're, you know, you're doing some fantastic work. So I yeah. appreciate people out you that are really pushing forward. So absolutely. Well, thanks for uh, coming on, man. I can't wait to catch up with you again in the future. Sounds good. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Bye-bye. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.